Where I buy my model engineering supplies, part two. Sets of castings and raw materials. I've been a customer of Blackgate's engineering for many years. And when I look back, most of the parts that I bought for model engineering purposes came from Blackgate's engineering. I must admit, they are a bit of a cottage industry, but there's nothing wrong with that. I'm basically the same. These clips show Duncan in the back room flanging boiler plates. And here they are, after the flanging job, coming out of the acid bath. This is very labour intensive, just look how the kits end up. This is a boiler kit for a speedy 5 inch gauge locomotive. I'm not going to dwell on boilers because I've never built one. I've built one of these though, this is a sweet pea locomotive. It was a few years ago, I stretched it to 7 and a quarter inch gauge and it was very easy to build and ran well. I didn't build the boiler but here's a boiler kit for you to look at. From Blackgate's engineering you can also buy pre-flanged front and rear parts for water tanks. The stock they carry, particularly on the casting side of the operation, is quite phenomenal. They don't just do castings and boiler plates at Blackgate's, you can buy just about anything that you need. Once you've finished building your locomotive, you can buy one of these to raise steam. You will also need a couple of these, one for steam oil and one for lubricating oil. These are Rylang oil cans, really good quality. They also sell superheated steam cylinder oil and lubricating oil. This is their popular sweet pea design. And I do recommend one of these for a beginner because it makes into a nice engine and it is very easy to build relative to some of the others. They also supply castings, parts and drawings for simplex locomotives. The parts for this engine originally came from Blackgate's engineering. It's a Clarkson design of a 5 inch gauge Stirling single locomotive. The brand Clarkson is now owned by Blackgate's Engineering and it also includes quite a few stationary engines too. I used to live quite close to Blackgate's Engineering so it was very easy and very convenient for me just to pop in and buy bits of steel. Now I have to think about it because I live a good bit further away. This is part of my workshop when I was at the other house and in common with my current workshop it's a bit messy but I have a lot of parts. I even bought this. What do you think this is? Before I get bombarded with messages, it's actually a set of locomotive brake blocks cast in a ring. You machine them and then just cut them out. Here are a few clips of my 7.25 inch gauge Titch locomotive. And in case you're wondering why I'm showing you this, that's because every part of this was bought from Blackgate's engineering. My friend the late Randy Blackburn built the boiler, but the boiler kit came from Blackgate's engineering. This engine is built from the Kenyans drawings, but there the similarity ends. The wheels are not like the drawing, they come from another engine, and the cylinders are sweet pea cylinders. All of the fittings are Jubilee fittings, more about this in the next episode. I have no financial connection with Blackgate's engineering, the owners and the people who work there are friends of mine. This is a Brunel Models Grasshopper Beam Engine, castings are available from www.brunelmodels.co.uk I didn't build this model from scratch, I rebuilt it. This is what it was like when I received it. And this is what it was like after I'd finished rebuilding it. As it says on screen, I completely rebuilt and refinished this engine in 2013. And as you can see, the engine looks good and runs very well. I had to sell it though, along with quite a few other models, to clear a mortgage shortfall. Now for the first time in my life, I don't have to sell models to buy new ones. I can keep the ones that I really like. But here it is running in slow motion. A good friend of mine built a Brunel Models Cunardia steam engine and that was really good. These models need no introduction. They are of course Stuart Models. And the company has been around for a long time. Stuart Models are currently based in Bridport in Dorset. This is an extract from my How to Build a Model Steam Engine series where I cover the building of a Stuart Models Victoria. Watching the unboxing video from the first ever episode reminds me I really must make some more episodes of this. This series, How to Build a Model Steam Engine, is for my Patreon supporters only. Today is Monday the 15th of February 2021 and in about three months time this video will become public on YouTube. If you're watching this as a public YouTube video and want to see the rest of the series, then you will have to join Patreon. If you're currently watching this on Patreon, I thank you for your kind support.
I find that these Stuart Victorias are ideal for beginners because they're a bit bigger than some of the Stuart range, but you can still build one using a small lathe. The first station engine I ever built was a Stuart Victoria, and here it is. A while ago, I sold some engines from my collection. Most of them were Stuart engines, but this one was a Cotswold Heritage engine, called a Perseus. I've worked on a few of them for one particular customer that I have. When you buy these Cotswold Heritage products, you get certificates of authenticity, etc. And the kits are quite well presented. All the parts are vacuum-packed onto a card like this. Shown on screen at the moment is the Cotswold Heritage Aerial Steam Engine, which of course is a factory machine kit. Some of the parts, like the Governor, are for decoration only. They spin round, but they don't do anything. This is part of my website. And if you wish to know if I'm selling any models, please don't email to ask me. Just have a look on the website under Models for Sale. From time to time, I do post models in this section that are for sale. Back now to some more steam engines from Stuart Models. Here are a couple of beam engines. One of these was actually a factory built model and the other one was not very well built and for some reason they swapped quite a few parts around between them. Here are a couple of Stuart flywheels and as you can see the design of the front one is different to the one behind. These were all part of a collection of models that I sold and I can't remember where some of the parts came from. On the table, apart from a couple of beam engines and a Cotswold Heritage Perseus, there are quite a few different Stuart engines. And now for something really good. This is a Stuart Major Beam, built by a really good engineer. What a lovely piece of kit this was. It was built by a man called Dedick Fitzgibbon, and it belongs to a friend of mine down in Portsmouth. But I'm saving the best till last, in my opinion. This wonderful thing is a Stuart Models triple expansion engine, expertly built by a man called Ronnie Mall from Scotland. This is an extract from one of the videos I made about it, and at the time I was running it in. That was the engine running on low pressure. Once the boiler hit working pressure, the engine sounds completely different. This engine is a thing to me of pure joy. I couldn't build one of these, I wouldn't even know where to start. Ronnie Mall is one of those engineers, well, he's just got something that a lot of other people don't have, including myself. This is the favourite engine in my collection. It's now in a glass case, but I get it out occasionally to have a play with it. The engine, that is. And that's it from this video about where to get casting sets from. I'd just like to say, as always, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.